First question I have is for you and uh, from a perspective of AASHTO. I was talking with our Secretary Lynn Peterson last week from Washington State a little bit about this issue of uh, practical design. And um, you know, despite the efforts of AASHTO, only a handful of states have actually adopted practical design consistently, uh, something in Washington State we are trying to do, and uh, trying to perhaps get that to be used more. Can you talk a little bit about why states regularly aren't using practical design, practical design to develop and deliver projects and what some of the hurdles may be? Mr. Chairman and Representative Duncan, can we get back to you with information on that? We will answer that question, but I didn't come prepared to answer that. Oh, okay, okay, great. Yeah, I would appreciate that. It's something we, we want to be looking at. Um, as well, um, <clears throat> we've seen decreased uh, traffic fatalities over the last few years, um, but pedestrian and bike deaths have uh, not gone down at the same rate. So last year, we asked a few of us asked the GAO to look at this trend. Um, and one suggestion we've heard is that we're over engineering or over building roads so that the posted speed limit may not match the size of the road. As a result, that contributes to a, an, a, a, a more unsafe um, road for bike and pedestrians, uh, bikers and pedestrians. Um, have you, has Ashto looked at this issue, relationship between design standards and uh, road safety for, for bikers and pedestrians? Mr. Chairman, Representative. Uh, yes. The answer, the simple answer is yes. Ashto is looking at that. Let me let me just expand for one second here. I would tell you that uh, in Wyoming, and I think this this is a microcosm of what the discussions that are going on in other places. And I'm talking about the highway system, um, non-urban at this point. Okay. Sure. Um, robust discussion. The legislature there is to, is talking about how does highway design and and uh, driver and um, cyclist behavior interact in terms of the fatality count. We went, uh, we quintupled this last year our average over the last 10 years in terms of cyclist deaths. But when we analyze that, and by the way, those numbers are not nearly as big as that might sound, putting it that way. Sure. But when we analyzed it, what we found was behavior, uh, driver behavior and cyclist behavior was really 100 percent the issue, not the design of the pavement. So there's. There's a broader discussion that needs to be held, and as a as a career law enforcement officer, before coming into um, my current position, that's one of the things that we we have that that ability to emphasize that that is part of the discussion at the table as we as we uh, analyze that. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mayor. I have a separate question for you. It has to do with the bill that I've introduced called the Tiger Cubs. You know, the Tiger Program is for large projects. We introduced something that would um, be for smaller projects. Um, because we found that if you, want a sm if you want nickels and dimes, you can get it from the federal highway program. If you want big chunks of money, you can get it. But if you're a city of mid-size and you want something in between, um, there's really no one pot of money for that city to complete a project that is big for that mid-size city, but small compared to what's in, uh, what, what, what Tiger is directed at. Um, I was wondering if uh, NLC has taken a look either at that, my bill, or just the general idea of looking at some of these mid-sized cities and how to help them um, access federal dollars for those one-time big projects that are big for those mid-sized cities? Uh, I'm not sure, and I'll get back to you on whether or not NLC has a specific uh, position as it relates to a Tiger or Cub program. But I, I will tell you this, because I believe this is very consistent with our approach. Uh, the Tiger program has been enormously successful, not just because it's leveraging federal dollars so much more and it is tailored to local needs and combines multi-agency perspectives and needs to reflect what community needs are as it, as it surrounds transportation projects. And having a simpler program, which I assume is consistent with what you are proposing for smaller communities, can only increase dramatically how federal funds get used to meet those local needs and the state needs. Um, we are finding that, um, and we have been a beneficiary of a Tiger grant, and we took um, basically a relatively small federal grant and we leveraged that uh, with two cities, with our transit agency, and then with private funding to be able to build out a project. And that kind of creativity that comes through a program like that, uh, we think forces us to think better and to, and to broaden our reach in terms of 
uh, in terms of who we go to, both for funding and conceiving and developing a project at the local level. So we would encourage that kind of approach as a way to optimize, really, the Federal money and really tailor it to local needs. Yeah, and th thank you. Just yes. one, fi one final note. If you all, and I will pass on to NG as well, if you all can be more specific and help us be more specific about the funding issue, we are all talking about robust funding. It's, but it's trying, to, trying to get to the answer here is a little like talking about the weather. Right? No one, everyone talks about it. No one does anything about it. Um, we need to get a lot of help to be specific about the funding need um, in, in the future. Good, good point. Uh, Mr. Zeldin is next on our side. Thank you. Mr.